Okay, so in this last video, what I'm going to do is to show you how to update the kernel. So what I'm going to do is go back to where I was. Um, I've kept the Linux kernel. Always keep the current kernel source um, in case you need it. Um, also, if I um, mount the boot, you'll see, or you might have already seen, that I keep the older kernels until I've filled up the boot directory, boot, the boot partition, um, in case I need to boot them. I certainly keep the, mo the most recent previous kernel, so I'll keep the current one and the previous one in case I make a change on the current one and the system can't boot. At least I've got the next most recent kernel, um, which obviously in this case will be the one that I was running, running prior to updating to 5.13 to .19. Um, and it's useful to have that so you can boot into it and make some fixes to the one you're trying to update. Uh, and go back to it so that's useful. So what I'm going to do now is to extract the newer kernel, which is 5.14.12, extract the source. And to change into the directory, and as before, to make MR proper. So again, it's not reported anything, anything. so it probably was empty, but there's no harm in running that. Now this is where the bit of magic happens, because if you remember before, I built in the config into the kernel and, the, and also set the setting to present that in the proc file system, the virtual file system, and there it is there. So I can look at that with zcat or zless, and you can see it was generated for version 5.13.19, so it proves that um, this is the one that I built earlier on. Um, you can see even the first bit, it tells, tells you about what version of GCC was used to build the kernel. So it was a, a Gen 2 modified version, and it's 10.3.0. The internal Gen 2 version number, it's got uh, version 2 on there. So that, that proves that um, that that's working correctly. If I've forgotten to do that, although once you've set it, it's always there because it just remains there because you'll see in a moment, I'll just keep propagating the config into newer versions. But if you do find there's a problem with that or it's not there, another reason for keeping the older source files around a little while is... Um, of course, there's the existing .config in the previous version of the kernel source, which is there. So in theory, if I was to diff those two, they should be identical because that file that you can see on the screen there, that one there, is that file, but it's just zipped up. It's in the kernel memory, but the kernel presents it as the gzip file. So what I do normally now, after I've extracted the new kernel, is I do zcat for slash proc config.gz and I just redirect it to a new config, uh, sorry, .config file. And then the next thing to do is to run a target on make called make old config. And what this does, it takes the config, because it knows it's from a previous version, it scans it and um, hopefully, yes, it's, it scans it and then it asks me questions about any new updated options that have been included in the new version. And generally, I'll accept defaults. Um, they're generally good. Sometimes, especially with drivers, you'll notice it wants to add them in and the default, you can see the default here is the is no because it's in the capitals, whereas the Y and the question, well, the Y is in lowercase. The question mark, I think, Gives information, yes, gives information about that option. But generally, um, the default option is acceptable. But don't go, just hold the enter button down and accept the defaults because the chances are you'll have things added in that you don't want added in. So I'll just press enter there. 
platform runtime mechanism support. I'm not really sure what that is. It's not a driver, so I'm just going to accept the default for that. Now here's a driver for a, a device by the looks of it, but it has actually defaulted to no, so that's good. If that defaulted to yes, I, I know I haven't got whatever this device is, so I would have just overridden the default and done no, but the default's no anyway. There's another one there, another driver by the looks of it. And another one, another one. Just press enter each time on these. Simple frame buffer driver. I'll just accept the default there. WMI hardware privacy support, no, I'm not interested. Wireless hotkey button, no. Intel platform specific drivers, yes. Clock driver for ARM reference designs. Well, definitely no, I don't want to do that. use that because this is not an ARM system. Sometimes these questions, depending on how many um, updates have been in between the two versions from the existing version to the new version, there may, there may be nothing, um, especially if it's just minor updates that you're updating. Um, sometimes there's one or two questions, but as you can see with this one, there are quite a few questions, um, and that's it. So it wasn't too painful this time, actually. And you can see it says it's written the configuration back to the .configs file, so we can look at that. And as you can see, it's now got a new version, the latest version um, of the kernel that I'm going to build now. And as before, just going to run make and build the kernel. And again, it's going to obviously take four minutes, maybe a little bit longer. Uh, it's not too much difference. It's only got, gone up by one point in the version number, so it shouldn't be too bad. And when that's done, I'll show you it's just the same procedure as before to install the new kernel.
Okay, so that's finished compiling. It looks like it took um, just about the same amount of time as before, which not surprising really, because as I said, it's only a minor um, update. <clears throat> well, when I say minor, it's only a small point update. So yeah, as before, um, come root and do, I'll just check I've got the boot partition loaded or mounted rather, pretty sure I have yet, make install, again just check that's gone in there okay and it has it's fine, you can see there's the new version there 5.4.12 there's the symbols map and the kernel itself, you can see I've made no changes but the kernel's grown slightly so it could be um, other extra options or um, improved code, more code that's been put in there. So I've installed the kernel. Next I need to install the modules. Make modules underscore install. As I said before, normally the next thing I'd do is to rebuild, if it was Gen 2, is to rebuild any packages um, that have been built against the current kernel. They need to be rebuilt against the new kernel to allow them to work. Um, obviously like before I'm not going to do that. So the only thing left to do is to run grub make config minus o slash boot forward slash grub grub.cfg and as you can see there now we've got three kernels to boot from. We've got the latest one which I'm about to boot into. The previous one which is the one that's currently running and the one I started out with which is the actual Gen 2 specific one. So all I need to do now is to quit the root, leave the desktop and reboot the machine. And there's the boot. I'm not sure why my extra settings have gone, but not to worry. I'll just boot into the default one. It could be that I'm, it's twice I've not booted into a Gen 2 kernel, but um, I'm not worried about that. It's uh, nothing to do with what I'm doing as far as showing you how to build the kernel, there's nothing to worry about. So there we go, we've booted into it, let's do a uname minus a and you can see we've got the newest version 5.14.12 um, let's do an IP a it shows the Ethernet is up again so that's good and once again I can ping my gateway, uh, yep that works so look at the message now just have a quick scan through it again and as you'd probably expect it looks pretty much the same as before there's no errors to worry about um, that's, that's highlighted a little bit, so I'm not sure if that's something I should look at. Port power management may be unreliable. I'm not sure what that means. But it's not a serious problem. Um, and as before, I noticed, oh, yeah, that, that warning's there as well. Again, not sure if that's, that could be, in fact, that that firmware is not loaded. That could be why that's... Uh, doing that possibly um, but yeah that that error is still there so that's something I'd need to sort out but apart from that it all looks good um, you can see the vulnerabilities um, the only one where the presser is vulnerable is this ITLB I'm not sure if there's anything 
I can do to get around that, but all the others have got mitigation loaded, so that's all good. But yeah, the the kernel's been updated now, as you see, we're running the latest version as of today, the latest stable version. Um, once again, I've also got the configuration as part of the kernel, so it's always around if ever I need to refer to it or build the next version. I'll just go through the same process, copy the config, do make hold for config to update it to the latest version, build the kernel, install the kernel, install the modules, rebuild any software that I've got um, built against the kernel, and re rerun the grub configure command to pick up the new version and reboot, and it's as simple as that, updating. It, as I say, the hard bit is getting a customized kernel that works, um, that has got everything taken out that you don't need, but that has got everything built in that you do need. And generally, it will be a case now, like like at the moment, I haven't got the Bluetooth working, so that would be something I would do another iteration of uh, rebuilding the kernel. And each time you build and deploy, the, well, yeah, build the kernel and deploy the kernel, this figure here goes up by one. So it shows like it's a revision number of this kernel, which can be helpful for identifying um, what you're doing with each version of the same, or each revision of the same kernel you're building. So that might be something I'll do next time. That'll go to hash two. I might find that it's still not working. I need to do something else to it, just tweak it slightly, use another option, rebuild it, it'll go to number three. Then I might look at that firmware problem. So that'll be another update, number four and so on and eventually you'll be tweaking the kernel such that it'll be spot on there'll be no warnings or errors um, I'll say there won't be any warnings or errors some some of the older motherboards I've got um, I've got the ACPI hasn't been implemented pro properly and it does say it's a bug um, so there's nothing that can be done about that it's just a bad implementation in the BIOS it's, they're too old for BIOS updates so it's not to say that you won't have a kernel without errors but at least you can um, look at setting options and things to um, get rid of as many errors as possible and have a, uh, an efficient and a small kernel working. So I hope that has been useful. Um, I thought I've been wanting to do this for quite a while. And I thought it, it's something I need to do because of the fact that I build um, or I do videos on two uh, main distributions that are built from source, namely um, Linux from scratch and Gen 2. So, um, you know, in the future when I do them, uh, it's obviously a good reference point if you come to build um, your own kernel in the future for another system and get a bit stuck. Hopefully, this will help you out. So, thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed it, I'd appreciate a uh, thumbs up and um, subscribe to my channel if you want to get to know about more more stuff i do in the future thanks very much goodbye